Well, obviously, our value stocks uh, are still down pretty far, uh, even before yesterday. You know, everybody talks about how the market had run too far. The average value stocks in the 2000 value index was down almost 20 percent even before yesterday. And then that became 24, 25 percent yesterday. So uh, after yesterday, absolutely, there were some names that were even cheaper. But we just want to push back against this idea that the market had run too far. No, it hadn't for value stocks. I mean, Russell 1000 value, Charlie, was down about 10 percent over the kind of three days since Monday through through yesterday. Does that tell you that just that they had become short term overextended or people are easily spooked who are kind of latecomers to uh, to this value cyclical rally? Yeah, it's, it's all about to me, in my opinion, it is all about the change in the news, the change in the direction of the news. We had had a wonderful, I'd say almost two and a half months of the news getting better and better and better. And then we had the news out of Texas and the hospitalization rates and people panicked that we were now going to change the direction of the news. That's what sent the market down so dramatically. Uh, I think today, sober heads, I'll call them, people who have gone through the numbers, the Wall Street Journal editorial page did a nice job on this showing that the numbers really haven't gotten significantly worse. And that's why we bounced back today. Just want to bring Rob Arnott into this conversation from Research Affiliates. He's the chairman there. Rob, just talking about to a value uh, investor, portfolio manager, Charlie Bobrinskoy, saying that there is still value, even though the market has run up so far so fast. I is this a value-oriented market? Is that where you want to be? I think so. Now, timing the value growth cycle is always a little iffy because uh, uh, you don't know when cycles are going to turn. But you do know relative valuation. And value is cheaper relative to growth than it's ever been before in history, including the peak of the tech bubble. That's how far that rubber band is stretched. And uh, what, maybe what actually makes it in demand, though? I mean, that we, we, people have been saying that for years. Well, value stocks. Keep in mind, value stocks are always uh, companies that have more headwinds, that are troubled, that uh, have lower profit margins, slower growth rates. That's why they're cheap. And the question is, are they cheap to an extent that they're at a big discount or a huge discount or a moderate discount? They were at a moderate discount in 2007. They were at a huge discount at the uh, worst of the global financial crisis and at the peak of the tech bubble. And they're at a huge discount today. Uh, put a different way, the growth stocks are trading at extravagant multiples. So th you can view this either as, uh, gosh, these stocks have hurt us lately or, gosh, these stocks are really, really cheap. Uh, I prefer to focus on what's cheap and focus on what the long-term opportunities look like, and they look pretty spectacular. All right. Uh, restaurant stocks rebounding after yesterday's massive sell-off. Kate Rogers looks at which names could hold up better during spikes of coronavirus infections. Hi, Kate. Hi, Mike. Well, restaurants that really have robust carryout and delivery systems have been performing better in this new normal because they have different ways to cater to consumers. Take a look at Chipotle, Domino's, Papa John's, and Wingstop. Those are the four top performers in the restaurant sector this year. Starbucks also rebounding today. It is down 14% year-to-date. Remember, earlier this week, it said it projects a $3 billion loss in Q3 due to the COVID pandemic. And casual dining names like Bloomin' Brands, Brinker, and Darden all down between 30 and 50% for the year. The casual sector, though, has been struggling more than others, and that's been going on long before COVID ever hit the scene, guys. Back over to you. Okay, thanks. Charlie, um, restaurants would be seemingly a group that's right at the center of this debate over how fast we get back to anything looking like pre-COVID normal uh, and whether these business models can, can hold up. How would you approach it? Yeah, so, Mike, we've talked about the three buckets. The first bucket is the companies that are actually doing better because of COVID. Um, smuckers, people are eating a lot more peanut butter at home. This, those stocks, in our opinion, are probably overpriced. The second bucket are companies that have temporary headwinds because of COVID, but they'll spring back to life after we get through this. That's uh, Zimmer, Hips and Knees. The third bucket is people that are permanently impacted by this, that will, at least for the next five or six years, never come all the way back. I'm going to personally say the restaurants are mostly in bucket number two, that the headwinds are going to be temporary. Um, but that's a controversial view. There are people that think this is going to take a long time for people to recover. I happen to personally think that a lot of us are sick of eating our own cooking and we're going back to restaurants. <laughs> 
Sick of eating our own cooking, yes. Going out to restaurants, I don't know. Rob, you just said that there are still spectacular values out there. Do you see any in, in the restaurant space or consumer stocks in general? You know, I, I think the best opportunities are actually not in the U.S. The U.S. stock market has rebounded to, I, I like to use something called the Schiller P.E. ratio. It's price relative to 10-year smooth earnings. And that Schiller P.E. ratio peaked at 31, 32 times the long-term earnings uh, earlier this year, hit a low of about 22 times. And by the end of the first quarter, it was already back all the way up to 25 times. Now it's at 28 or 29 times. That's not cheap. Emerging markets are down at about 11 to 12 times. Emerging markets value stocks, which often are resource companies or financial institutions or uh, state-owned enterprises. Uh, a lot of the value stocks in emerging markets are trading at eight times. Um, uh, the deep value side in emerging markets is, is trading at four times cash flow. These are really, really low multiples and can set the stage for double-digit returns on a 10-year look-ahead basis. So to the extent that you have a portion of your portfolio where you can tolerate volatility and not watch it day-to-day -day and worry about whether it's up or down today, having a portion of your portfolio in emerging markets value stocks seems to me to be a much better play than some of the U.S. value stocks. Uh, some of which came back further than uh, uh, any fundamentals would justify. The uh, uh, Hertz story, of course, is uh, uh, well over uh, studied in recent days.